Hi there, and thank you for taking a look at my channel. Now, in this video, we are going to tackle the topic that seems to confuse more people than anything else. We're looking at long division. We're going to take it a step at a time, and you will find that knowledge of your times tables is really important here because there's pretty much as much multiplication as there is division. So let's take a look. If you are familiar with the very basics of division, then please do feel free to move a little bit further on the video. But I want to start with the basics just so that we're absolutely clear what long division is trying to help us to do. I've put a little situation here and I'm starting with a very, very simple one where we have an amount of money, 693 pounds. Now imagine you actually have that money in your hand and you are going to share it between three people, A, B, and C at the bottom of the screen here. First of all, what you would look to do is to share out the hundreds. Do the big denominations first. So the first question you're going to ask yourself is, if I have 600 pounds and I want to share it out equally, how much do I give each person? So you are literally taking the six and dividing it between the three people. Obviously six divided by three is two, so each person is going to get 200 pounds. Once you finish with the hundreds, you are then looking to divide out the tens. So we have 90 pounds, and again, we are sharing it between the three people. So we take the nine and we divide that by three, and that gives us three. 90 divided by three is 30, but we're doing it a number at a time. So it's nine divided by three is three each. We've now finished with the tens column. We move on to the units. There are three of them. So we now have three divided by three and that equals one. So they get one pound each out of the three. So we've finished. 693 shared out equally between three people, in other words, divided by three, is 231. Now, in a situation like this, you wouldn't need long division. So let's look at a similar one where it comes in useful. So here is almost the same question. I've changed the amount of money ever so slightly. We now have 672 pounds. We're going to start in exactly the same way. We are going to divide out the 600. So again, we have a six. We have six divided by the three people. That gives us two. So we know they are going to get 200 each. Now we come to the next number. This time it's a seven. The seven represents 70 pounds. So here we have seven divided by three. Now, this gives us a new problem because, of course, if we divide seven by three, asking ourselves how many threes are there in seven, the answer is two. So we have to give each person a two, 20 pounds. Now, here's the thing. We've only given out 20, 40, 60 pounds here. We haven't given out all the money because of course seven divided by three is two but there is one remaining long division is going to help us to identify that now that one that ten we have only got one of them we cannot give it to one person therefore instead we split that ten up into ten units so now that we finished with the seven we have the two here but we have to add this remaining 10 onto it. So it becomes 12. Just to summarize that again, we did seven divided by three, that was two. We gave each person the two, the 20 pounds, and we decided there was a 10 left over. So we added that onto the units. So we now have 12. We have 12 divided by three, and that equals four. So we can give each person four pounds 
and we've divided it. Now, if that seems confusing, this is where learning the mechanics of a long division sum can help us. Let's do this sum again using long division. So here we are again, exactly the same sum, but this time laid out in the traditional format, sometimes known as the bus stop format. We are going to do this in exactly the same order as we did before. We are going to start dividing the six, then the seven, then the two. Here's how we do it in long division. The first question then is six divided by three. So six divided by three, exactly as before, is two. Now, what long division does is make sure that we have divided out the whole number. In order to check that, we then do a multiplication. We multiply the three times the two. Three times two is six. And if we put that on the bottom here and take it away from our original six, we get zero. That is telling us we have given out all the hundreds. We have shared them out between three people, they've got two each, and there is nothing left over. The next step then is to work with the seven. And we do that by dropping the seven down and writing it next to the zero. So we now have seven, because we're working at the bottom of the sum here, seven divided by three. Now, seven divided by three is also two. We can't get any more threes out of it. So let's do the check. Have we used all the seven up? Well, this time we're going to multiply the three by this two here. Three times two is six. Write it underneath the seven and take it away. This time, seven minus six is one. This is telling us that we have divided the seven by three. How many threes are there in seven? There are two threes in seven. But two times three is only six. If we take that away, it means we have one left over, the spare one that we had on the previous page. Now we've finished with the seven, we bring down the two, which goes on the end of the one here. We are then saying it is 12 divided by three. Well, 12 divided by three is four. Do the multiplication again as a check. This time three times the four. Well, three times the four is 12. If we put that on the bottom and take it away, we have nothing left. Therefore, we have come to the end of our sum. Now, I know there are some of you who will be saying, well, we don't need to do the long division for that. We're used to doing short division. We would have simply carried the one onto the two at the top here. Yes, you probably would, and that is a perfectly good way of doing it. We are simply using simple examples here to show how the long division works because long division comes into its own when the sums are a little more complex and they take away the need for that mental arithmetic. It's also worth noticing that I haven't used decimals so far. We've used numbers that divide exactly. And I'm going to use another example now of where this happens. Let's take a look then at a slightly larger, more complicated sum. This time we have 3,912 and we're dividing it by 12. We're going to start in exactly the same way. So we are actually looking at our first column, which is thousands. And we are asking how many twelves are there in three? Well, of course, there aren't any twelves in three. The answer is zero. You don't have to put the zero on the beginning of the number. I'm just going to put it in there for the time being to show how everything works. So how many twelves in three? None. Let's do that multiplication because we haven't used any 12. So 12 times zero is zero. So put the zero in, take it away. And of course, we are still left with the three. We haven't used any of it. We are then going to do the next thing that we do with long division. We are going to take the nine down and put it alongside the three. So again, we're working at the bottom of the sum here. We are now looking at 39 divided by 12. So how many 12s are there in 39? 
Knowing your times tables definitely helps here. The answer is there are three 12s in 39. So the next part of our answer is indeed three. We're going to do the multiplication. It is now 12 times three. This tells us how many numbers we've actually shared out. So 12 times three is 36. So out of this 39, we've only used up 36. So take it away, we have three left. The next step, move on to the one. That's going to come all the way down here and it's going to appear alongside the three. So we now have how many 12s are there in 31? 31 divided by 12. Again, times table knowledge, the answer is two. Let's do the multiple again to test just how much we've used up. 12 times two, well that is 24. We've only used up 24 here. Let's take that away and we are left with seven. Finally, we're going to move on to the two. That's going to come all the way down here and it's going to come on the end of the seven. We now have 72 divided by 12. How many 12s in 72? Well, the answer is six. So by using long division, we haven't had to work out the remainder in our head and move it onto the next column as you would with short division. Doing the subtraction in each case has left us with the exact number that we need to divide by in the next column. Okay, let's try another one and take this a step further. 1034 divided by four. How many fours are there in one? There are no fours in one. Therefore, four times nothing is nothing. Take it away, we still have one. Don't forget the next step, we are going to drop the zero down alongside the one. So we are now looking at how many fours there are in 10. 10 divided by four. Well, we can get two fours out of 10. Do the multiplication, four times the two is eight. We've only used up eight of the 10. Take that away, it tells us we have two left. Next step, bring down the three, put that by the side of the two. We now have 23 divided by four. 23 divided by four, the answer is five. Let's do the multiplication, see where we are. Four times five is 20. So that goes on the bottom and we take it away. So that means we have three remaining. Four fives were 20, we had 23, there are three left. Go again, the four comes all the way down to the bottom here, put it next to the three. We now have how many fours in 34? 34 divided by four. Well, our answer here is eight. There are eight fours in 34. Eight times four, that is the next multiple that we're going to do. Eight times four is in fact 32. So we haven't used all the 34 up. So let's take that away and we are left with two. So we've come to the end of our number. We've divided 1,034. We've come to the answer 258, but we have a problem in that we still have two remaining here. You could put remainder two, but let's move into decimals. Here's what we do at this stage. We've reached the end of our whole numbers. We're going to move into decimal places here. Therefore, we need a decimal point. And we're going to put that decimal point both on the number in the question and also immediately above it in the answer. Now, once we've written our decimal point, it is perfectly acceptable to create zeros on the end. It doesn't change the number. 1034.0 is the same as 1034. What it does is give us a digit that we can now take down to the bottom. The zero that we've put on the end comes all the way down and moves next to the two. We have now got 20 divided by four. So 20 divided by four is five. And just as we were doing before, we write in the five. We then try the multiplication. 
4 times 5 and 4 times 5 is 20. So if we take that away, we have nothing. We have therefore used up all our numbers and our answer has come to an end. It is worth saying at this point that sometimes you may still have a number in the bottom here. And if you do, you can simply create another zero and if need be another zero. You may find some answers become recurring numbers so you have to stop. Some may finish after one, two, maybe three decimal places. So let's just look at one final example where that might happen. So here we have 545 divided by eight. Let's work our way through again one step at a time. Five divided by eight. There are no eights in five. That's gonna have a zero on the end. Eight times zero is zero. Take it away, we still have five. We haven't used any of it. What's the next thing we're going to do? We're going to drop the four down. The four goes next to the five. We then have 54 divided by eight. Well, 54 divided by eight, how many eights in 54? We can get six eights out of 54. Now, if we do the multiplication, the eight times the six, we get 48. Six eights are 48, we've only used up 48. Let's take that away. And there are six remaining. Let's bring down the five, put the five next to the six. So we are now being asked, how many eights are there in 65? Well, the answer is eight. And if we do the multiplication, eight times eight is in fact 64. Take that away and we have one left. Here we are again at the end of the whole numbers. We need to go into decimals. Therefore, first of all, before we do, we need to put decimal points, both in the question and in the answer. We then create the zero. And as soon as we have a zero there, we take it all the way down to the bottom and place it next to the one. We then have 10 divided by eight. How many eights in 10? Only one. Let me extend my answer bar a little here. So eight times one is our next multiplication. Eight times one is eight. Take it away. We have two still remaining. Let's see what happens if we go again. We're going to create another zero. That zero is going to come all the way down to the two and leave us with a 20. How many eights are there in 20? There are two eights in 20. Now two times eight is 16. Take that away, we have a four this time. I'm going to try once more. I'm going to create another zero. I'm gonna bring that all the way down the page to the four and that's going to give me 40. This time it's 40 divided by eight. How many eights in 40? Well, the answer is five. Do the multiplication, eight times five is 40. We've used the whole 40 up. So if we take that away, we have zero. Therefore, because we've nothing left at the end, we have finally reached the end of the sum. So our answer, again, you can disregard the zero on the beginning, is 68.125. And there we have long division. I think if this is a topic that has confused you many times before, it's worth having a look through those techniques, maybe backing the video up and taking a second look. A step at a time, bring down the numbers, work out the remainder until you get to the end of the sum. I really do hope that has been of some use to you. If it has, please do subscribe. I have plenty of videos and I try to bring out at least one a week. Hopefully there's something else there that will be of use to you. Thank you very much.